Hi, my name is John Paul Raj and I'm on a mission to make the learning of math fun. So if you're new to this channel, please do consider subscribing. This is part six of sequences and series. And on this video, we're going to be talking about geometric sequences. So let's start. When we look at a sequence of numbers, something like this, 2, 6, 18, 54, 162, it's very clear that 2 times 3 is a 6. 6 times 3 is an 18. 18 times 3 is a 54 and 54 times 3 is a 162. That means each successive term is a multiple and that multiple is the constant multiple, okay? It's the same number. In this case, it's 3. So each successive term is a constant multiple of its previous term. As such, we can say for this particular sequence, we can say that 6 divided by 2 is going to be the same as 18 divided by 6 is the same as 54 divided by 18 and that will be the same as 162 over 54. The ratio of each successive term is the same and we denote that ratio as R. We call that R common ratio. So whenever a sequence of terms can be generated by a constant multiple or if they have this common ratio between successive terms, we call such sequences geometric. sequences. Now, you know, one very important question to ask conceptually is that why is it called a geometric sequence? Geometry typically refers to uh, shapes, right? Uh, this is more of an algebra topic. We study sequences and series algebraically. We have algebraic formulae. So it's very interesting that this term geometric is used to denote a sequence where consecutive terms, the ratio of consecutive terms is the same and we call that the common ratio. I'm not going to give you the answer in this particular video, but I want you to think about it. And if you know the answer, please mention that in the comments below. So also, can you see this particular sequence of numbers? Okay, um, 220 to 0.5. And what's the ratio if you see, if you compare 20 divided by 200? Okay, and we can clearly see that's 10. What about 2 divided by 20? That's again 10. And so that common ratio need not be an integer value. In this case, the common ratio was a 3 as we saw, right? The ratio between consecutive terms was 3 and integer value. And here, we've got the common ratio as a fraction, 1 over 10. And you know what's interesting? That common ratio can also be a negative number. So you can have an integer value, which can be positive or negative, or you can have a decimal value as long as the ratio of consecutive terms is the same, it's a common ratio, we call it a geometric sequence. Now, the formula for the nth term or the general term for any geometric sequence is given by u of n is equal to a times r to the power of n minus one. That a is the same first term. Okay, I'm going to write it again here. u n for a geometric sequence is a times r to the power of n minus one. And here, notations are the same. a is our first term. Universally, A is the first term for any kind of a sequence. And R, we saw, is the common ratio. Common ratio, the ratio between successive terms. So if you want, you can write it down as R is going to be U2 over U1, or it's going to be U3 over U2, and so on and so forth. It's going to be equal to any general UN over UN minus 1. Can you guys see this? All right. Now, one condition, as I said, that the R can be a positive value, a negative value. It can be a fraction, a decimal, but R cannot be equal to one. If you know why, I'm going to write it down. All right. Again, R cannot be equal to one. That's one condition. If you know why, please mention that in the comments below. I'm going to reveal all the suspense in another video, perhaps. Okay. But for now, I want you to think about it. And if you know why R should not be equal to one, please mention that in the comments below. All right, let's try and illustrate this formula using some of these examples that's given here. This question says, find the common ratio, the fifth term, the general term of the following sequences. They've not identified it as a GP, but the very fact that they said uh, common ratio, that hints that this is going to be a GP. But let's try and answer them anyway. The first sequence is three comma six comma 12 comma 24, so on and so forth. So what do we do? We just take the ratio of consecutive terms, okay? It's the second term to the first term. So it's six divided by three, that ratio is two, okay? The ratio of the third term, third term, now third term and second term, uh, that's 12 divided by six, and that's again two. So you can see that these are equal. Let's take the next ratio, the ratio of the fourth term to the third term, 24 divided by 12, 
and you can see that this the same ratio there's a common ratio and therefore you say this is a GP okay identify with these statements is a good way to answer your questions this is a GP and the common ratio R is 2 All right what have they asked the fifth term now because it's a GP you can use the formula u of n is a times r to the power of n minus 1 and what are we looking for the fifth term so n is equal to 5 right so let's just write down n must be 5 so u5 is going to be a which is the first term which is 3 in this case 3 times r we found r also to be r to be 2 and n is 5 i'm going to write it down as 5 minus 1 which is the first question uh, that's 3 times 2 to the power of a 4 and that should be u5. You can simplify this and say this is nothing but 3 times a 16. And that is 48. Which means that the fifth term of this GP is 48. Clear? All right. The next one is to find the general term. Okay. They asked for the fifth, uh, the common ratio, the fifth term and the general term. So the general term, again, we can write down un. We already have written that a was 3 and r was a 2. You're going to write down n minus 1 and that can be then simplified as 3 times 2 to the power of n minus 1 and that is the expression for the general term of that sequence. Can you see this? Cool. u of n is 3 times 2 to the power of n minus 1. Clear? All right. Let's take the second example which is uh, a case where r, the value of uh, r, the common ratio is a fraction. Okay. So I'm going to write that sequence of terms here. So the sequence of terms are 3, 1, 1 over 3, 1 over 9, and dot, dot, dot. Okay, so what we're going to do, just like we did in the earlier case, take the ratio of the second term to the first term. Okay, so that is 1 over 3. All right, that's 1 over 3. Okay, what about this ratio of the third term to the second term? And sometimes we need to do this a couple of times to figure out what the ratio is, especially, you know, cases like this, we can't make out what that is, right? So let's take the ratio of the third to the second. The third term is 1 over 3. The first term, uh, the second term is 1. And as you can see, that also boils down to 1 over 3. Okay, so clearly, these two ratios are the same. This ratio is just the second term. This is the first term. 1 over 3 is the ratio of the second term to the first term. The third term happens to be 1 over 3. The first, second term happens to be 1. And that ratio is again 1 over 3. So that ratio is seemingly 1 by 3. But let's confirm it with the ratio of the fourth term to the third term. And what do we get? We get um, 1 by 9 fourth term and 1 by 3 the third term and let's just do uh, fractions 1 by 9 times 3 by 1 and again you can see that cancels off nicely to give you the ratio as 1 by 3 so the common ratio it is a common ratio because the ratio of successive terms is 1 thirds we say r is 1 over 3 this is a geometric progression gp all right can you see this Cool. Now let's find out the fifth term. Okay. To do that, first let's write down n is equal to 5. So u5, according to our formula, is a. The first term was 3. All right. That's 3. R, which is 1 third to the power of n minus 1, n is 5. So it's going to be 4. All right. So that would then be 3 times 1 to the power of 4 is going to be 1 and 3 to the power of 4 is going to be just like that okay and which means that one factor of 3 can cancel off and the fifth term is just going to be 1 over 3 cube which is nothing but 1 over 27 and you can leave it as a fraction okay u5 the fifth term is just 1 over 27. So what we did was u5 is a the formula is a times r to the power of n minus 1 a is 3 r is 1 third 1 third to the power of n minus 1 n is 5 so that's 4 and this can be simplified as 1 uh, over 3 to the power of 4 1 to the power of any number is 1. You can cancel off a factor of 3 from the numerator and the denominator to get the final value as 1 over 3 cubed which happens to be 1 over 27. Cool now to find the general term for this particular sequence uh, un is going to be that a which was 3 times r which is 1 third to the power of n minus 1. In the same way you can simplify this as 3 over 3 to the power of n minus 1 okay because again 1 to the power of n minus 1 is just going to be equal to 1 and this can be further simplified just as in the early case one factor of 3 can cancel off so that you're going to get the general term as 1 over 3 to the power of n minus 2 okay be careful with the algebra. 1 over 3 to the power of n minus 2. All right, let's quickly recap. We saw that whenever there are sequence of numbers where the ratio of consecutive terms is common, is constant, 
We call them a geometric sequence. And you have to find out why it's called geometric. Okay, it's an interesting choice of word, right? So that common ratio R, we said it can be an integer, it can be positive, it can be negative, it can be a fraction. Leave it as a fraction, okay? You don't have to make a decimal and end up getting messy with the decimal values, okay? And the formula we saw for the general term is A times R to the power of N minus 1, where A is the first term and R is the common ratio. And I also said that that R, that common ratio cannot be equal to 1. R is the ratio between the consecutive terms. It cannot be equal to 1 and you're going to find out why and mention that in the comments below. If you found this video useful, do not forget to like, share and subscribe to this channel. I'm going to see you all in the next video.